Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ajay. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about binary search algorithm. So in any interview, if you are asked any question which is which is having an array of sorted integers, then you just get this in your head binary search algorithm. So this will help you to solve uh, the problems which are related to sorted arrays. So what is binary search? So it is a kind of searching technique. Uh, in a sorted array so if you are given any ele any element uh, and if you want to find whether that element is present in an array or not then we, you can use this binary search it is an efficient way of searching uh, an element in an array it, uh, it takes actually log n time so i will explain you uh, much about that here so for suppose if i am having an array of of eight elements which, which are which is a sorted array one two three four five six seven eight so if i'm having this uh, uh, array of integers which are sorted and if i'm given a target as one so i have to check whether one is in this array or not so how to do that one how to find whether one is there in this array or not so let's see how we can do it by using binary search algorithm so basically in a binary search algorithm uh, always you divide the array into two sub arrays and you start searching it so let me say you. so i will also add the uh, index as 0 1 2 5 6 so so always you have to start the searching from the middle element so here the middle element is uh, 0 plus 7 by 2 that is uh, the raw number that would be 3 so this is the middle element so first check whether the middle element is equal to the target is 4 is equal uh, is 4 equal to 1 so it's no So, so I mean first start the search from the middle element of the array and check whether it is matching the target if not if it is not uh, matching the middle element then you have to check whether the target is less than the middle element or greater than the middle element so here if you see 1 is less than 4 so 1 is less than 4 so if 1 is less than 4 you have to uh, consider the left side array which is from 0 to 2 0 to 2 in case if you are searching for an element if it is greater than the middle element then you have to consider the right side array why because right side will be having all the elements greater than the middle middle element and left side you will be having all the small small elements than the middle element so if you have any element that you if, if you have an element which is less than the middle element then you have to consider the left side array if you have any element which is greater than the mid element then you have to consider the right side array so here 1 is less than 4 so I am considering the left sub array which is 0 to 2 now consider 0 to 2 so if you take this array so I am writing down here 1 2 3 0 1 2 now find it now again you start searching as you did here now again find the middle element here so the middle element would be 0 plus 2 by 2 that is equal to 1 so the middle element is 1 that is 2 is 2 equal to equal to 1 no it's not equal to equal to 1 and it's, the target is 1 so I'm checking whether it is equal to the middle element of this array it's no it's not matching then I have to see whether it is less than or greater than middle element. So 1 is less than 2. So you have to consider this sub array. Which is left side. That is having only one element. That is the start and end would be only 0 to 0. Okay. So here in this array also you are not. Uh, uh, in this sub array also you cannot find the. Uh, middle element 
which is matching the target. Now you act uh, for that reason you again divided the array into two subarrays from the middle element. Uh, and as one is less than two, you actually took the left side array. So the left side array is one now and the index is zero. Now the middle element here is uh, zero. Start and end index of this is zero and zero. That would be zero plus zero by two that is equal to zero. So the middle element now is zero. So the, the middle element now is one at zero index is one matching one. Yes. So return this index. Return zero. That be that. Yeah, if you return zero, that be all. So this is how you can uh, find any find any element in an array using binary search if that array is sorted. So this is the process. So let us see how we can code that in the. Uh, let us see how we can code this actually. So for coding this, I will write the function prototype as int binary search. So I will actually explain you two ways of solving this thing. One is using recursion and the other one is just using the loop, while loop. So first I'll be explaining up, uh, about the recursion solution. So for that, I'm just writing the function prototype, which will take integer array of integers. I will just write as they are and int target. Okay. So this is the function prototype. So I have to return the target index. So this function, I mean, uh, this function, I mean, uh, by using this function, uh, by taking the input array and input target, I have to return the index of that particular target in this array. If that, first suppose if the target is not uh, uh, not there in this array, then I have to return minus one. For suppose, okay. Let's see how we can do that all. So first. Before that, uh, I want to write another function, recursion, recursive function, which is uh, int b search. It will take array of integers, int target, int start, and int. So this is the recursion function prototype. So let me implement this one. So this one I will call in the main function for the first time by just passing the array and the target as t. And the start index for the first time would be zero and the end index is the end of the array which would be AR dot length minus one. Okay. So this is the function prototypes and I'm calling the recursion first recursion call in the main function here. And let me implement the recursion function. So first to start searching it. I have to get the middle element of the array. So for getting the middle element, I'm using int mid. I will just write it as n int n that is equal to start plus end by two. Okay. Once I get the middle index, I will check if that array of middle index is equal to equal to target. If so, I will just return return that index. Else, else if so, if it is not matching the middle element, then I have to check whether that element is less than the middle element or greater than the middle element. If it is less than the middle element, I have to uh, use this less. Subarray. If it is greater than the middle element, I have to use the right 
So then let's do that one. So else if if target is less than a middle element, then I will uh, call the recursion function again. I will return the same function. The search. Passing the same array and passing the same target. And here, if the target is less than the middle element, then I have to pass the left subarray. So, left subarray start index will be same, but the end index would be mid, middle element minus one, middle index minus one. So, the start will be same, but the end would be middle minus one. Okay. So, if, if it is not less than middle element, that means it is uh, greater than the middle element. So, in that scenario, I will just call the recursion function for the right subarray. Pass the same array. Now, for the right subarray, if it is if the if the uh, target element is greater than the middle element then i have to call the i have to use the right subarray right so in this scenario the right subarray is 4 or right subarray start index is 4 and the end index is 7 so 4 is nothing but middle element plus 1 that would be mid plus 1 and the end index is the last element of the i mean it is same end is not changing so it will be same So this is the recursion function and also if anything is recursion, if anything is recursive to avoid the infinite loop you have to use some condition. So, so whenever s is greater than n, whenever the start index is greater than n, that means there are no elements in the array. So you have to just stop the process or uh, if uh, s is greater than n means you haven't found an element. Uh, it when it the recursion happened for the complete array, but you haven't find the element, so you have to just return the uh, one which is minus one. If you haven't found an element, then you you are returning minus one. So I'll just check here if s is greater than end, then return minus one. Okay. So in this scenario, you haven't found any element, so you are returning minus one. If not, uh, it gets into this, and if you found the element, then it will return that index. So this is the first way of solving this binary search uh, algorithm. So let me actually run you to this code. Let me actually uh, run through this code and show you how it works. So for suppose. For the first time, I'm having, so I will erase this thing now. I will run, I will walk you through the code and I will explain you exactly. So, let me have start index, end index, middle element, and this result is from, okay. So for the first time, I'm passing 0 as the start index and array dot length minus 1, which is 7 as the end index. So start would be 0 and end would be 7. So the mid would be 0 plus 7 by 2, that would be 3. So is 3 equal to equal to target middle element? Is element at 3 is equal to equal to target? Is 4 equal to equal to 1? No. 4 equal to equal to 1? It's no. Okay. So 4 is not equal to 1, so it is no. Now 1 is less than 4. I'll just write here. 1 is less than 4. I mean it is not equal, so it is not formed. The element is not yet formed. And we can see 1 is less than 4. So if 1 is less than 4, we actually take the left. Third. So for, you are checking 
uh, the middle element. So first you pass 0 and 7 here to this function. This is greater than n, yes, s is greater than n, it won't return minus 1. If array of middle element, which is 3, is equal to equal to target, no. Then it comes to LC block. If target 1 is less than array of middle element, yes, it is less than array of middle element. So it comes into this else block and here it will again call the recursion function. It will pass the same array, same target, same start, same start and the n would be middle minus 1 which is 3 minus 1 that would be 2, 0 to 2 that is the left array of this middle element and the middle element of, okay, now it will pass this start index and end index, okay, again it will call the same function, it will come s greater than n, yes, or you will get the middle element as 0 plus 2 by 2, that is 1, so you call the middle element, array of middle element is 2, no, is 2 equal to 1, no, 1 as 1 is less than 2, then it will come to LC block, is 1 less than array of middle element, yes, then it comes to else block. So in the else block, it will again call the recursion function. So here, here you will pass the same array with same target and uh, uh, the start index now would be same. Again, it would be 0 and the end index would be middle element minus 1, which is 1 minus 1 that is equal to 0. Okay. Now again, it now it calls the recursion function. Now it, uh, it is having start index as 0 and end, it, end as 0. It comes here as greater than e. No. Then uh, it comes here. You will get the middle element 0 plus 0 by 2. It is 0. So it will check here if array of middle element which is 0 of 0 is 0. Array of middle element of this array is 1. So it is matching the target. So it will return m. m is 0. So that way we will return the output. Okay, so it is for 1 equal to equal to 1. So 1 equal to equal to 1. So we return the index, which is the middle element, returns 0 in this scenario. So that way we can solve this thing. So coming to the time complexity. So here if you see, when n is 8, n equal to 8, we are actually calling the recursion function for 3 times. Once with this start, I mean here you can clearly see we are calling the recursion function for 3 times with different start and n index. So uh, actually you are calling for 3 times. So how you can do this, one? how you can compare this with the time complexity. So it is nothing but. 2 power 3 equal to 8. So this you can also write as log 2 of 8 equal to 3. So that is nothing but our time complexity would be big O of log n. And the space complexity would be big O of 1. As I am not using any temporary array or anything for computing this thing, so it would be the constant uh, space and the time complexity would be big of log n. So this is about the binary search algorithm. So this is one way of approaching using recursion. So there is another way also of approaching this solution also. So if you want to watch that one, you actually, uh, you can. I mean, I mean, I'm uploading that in the next video. So if you want to watch the another way of uh, doing the binary search you just watch my next video. I will post that link in the description of this video uh, That be all uh, Thank you for watching my video. Thank you